All right, let's get into making some soups now, okay? Because it's very critical the way you make the soup. And like the dressings, we usually add something to the soup to make liquid and some things to make it sweet and sour. We're always putting some onion, some mushrooms, you know, some spices in there and some type of bean in there or lentil, you know, or tempeh or something in there. Could be a split pea soup, a split pea lentil soup. Now let's go over how I make my Dr. Furman anti-cancer soup, a soup recipe that I keep in all of my books. I always put this recipe out there, so even though in my book might have 60 recipes, maybe three or four of them are still in an old book, this is one recipe I keep repeating, because it's one of my favorite soups and it has all those anti-cancer ingredients in it. Let's go over how you make this. Now, it has beans, it has onions, it has mushrooms, it has the carotenoids, like carrot juice and celery. It's got the hemp seeds and it's got the, the, the cruciferous, light, right? Like the kale or collards in it. But many of you guys know that when you cook kale or collards or bok choy, those cruciferous vegetables, when you cook them in a soup, you deactivate the myrosinase compound. And the myrosinase compound is needed to form the ITCs when you to, that form the ITCs that have the powerful anti-cancer effects and have the anti-heart disease effects as well. So the way we make the soup is this. We take the onion, which has a heat-sensitive enzyme in there called alienase, and we take the, the bok choy or the collards or the mustard greens or the turnip greens, which have the myrosinase, and we blend them in the Vitamix to make them into a creamy solution while it's still raw. We want to break down the cell wall fully while it's still raw, so we cause a chemical reaction to occur to form the isothiocyanates and the organosulfide compounds that have the anti-cancer effects. We don't want to cook that first. We can add that to the soup after it's blended. If we put it in the soup first, it would have deactivated the compounds. And then when you try to chew it or blend it, it would be, there would be no IT ITCs there. All right, so let's go through how I make the soup. The first thing I do when I make the soup is I put a quart and a half of water or two quarts of water into a big pot. Then I throw my cups of beans in there, a couple of cups of beans in there. It might be lentils or split peas or red kidney beans. But if it's beans, it's better to have soaked the beans overnight. You don't have to soak them, it just takes a little longer to cook them. But usually you want to soak them for at least an hour, mush them around with your hand, pour the water off so you get a little dirt out of it that was stuck into the bean, and then put the bean into the soup. So the first thing I did is I got the beans cooking because they take the longest to cook in the water. Now when I'm cooking split peas or lentils, I usually cook them, especially split peas, I usually cook them in a separate bowl, not in the same big bowl that I'm cooking my soup. The reason for that is they cook quicker and I want to blend them in the Vitamix after they're cooked down so the pea part of the soup is creamy and smooth. There's no lumps in the soup. I want my beans to be lumpy or chewy, but I don't want my peas to be lumpy and chewy. I want my pea soup my, to be the thick, creamy part of the soup. So I'll very often cook the peas separate, so when I'm blending, I'm blending them fully, but I'm not blending the other beans in the soup. So this soup has peas and it has red kidney beans, so I might have cooked my, red, my peas separate from the main part of the soup. So I have that cooking, and I have my red kidney beans and my azuki beans cooking. The azuki beans are a smaller red bean, and that's cooking. Okay, so now I bring out my blender. Now, excuse me, now I bring out the juicer. And now I juice a five-pound bag of carrot juice. I juice the whole five-pound bag of carrots, which forms about a quart and a half of carrot juice. I'll juice a head of celery. I'll juice some tomatoes. Maybe I'll juice an onion. But I juice the whole five-pound bag, and when I juice the whole five-pound bag of carrot juice, I take the pulp out of the blender, and I'll form it into a ball, and I'll put... I'll take the pulp out of the juicer, and I'll take the pulp, form it into a bowl with my hands, and put it back into the juicer a second time, to juice, and I'll get another cup of juice out of that, out of the five pound bag. I didn't want to waste all the juice, so I juiced it twice. I take those two cups of juice now, excuse me, I take the two cups, the two quarts of juice, and I add it to the liquid in the soup, because I had two quarts of water in there, so now my soup base is two quarts of water and two quarts of soup. It's two quarts of water and two quarts of juice. You got that now? So now I take my juicer and I clean it out and I put it away. And I bring out the Vitamix. And now I take, now I ladle a little liquid from the liquid of the soup into the, blend, into the Vitamix blender now. And I take the leek and I cut the, the root off the leek and maybe an inch off the top and I cut it down the middle and wash the leek carefully because dirt, I unravel the leek completely so there's no dirt stick, stuck inside. 
and now I put the, cut the leek in half and put it into the blender with red onion or, or, or yellow onion or shallots or scallion or whatever I'm putting to the soup, adding a little liquid in there and blend it, just enough liquid to make it blend. I don't want to add too much liquid because I'll break, because it'll dilute the chemical re reaction. The chemical reaction is forming sulfenic acid that causes your eyes to burn or tear, right? It's causing a gas to give off, which is forming anti-cancer organosulfide compounds. You want it to happen in your kitchen. You don't want to, to, to cook the onion first, to cook the leek first, because then you're not going to create the chemical reaction, and you're not going to form all those beneficial anti-cancer compounds. So now I cream down the onion or the scallion, and I could pour it into the soup to cook. The soup's not going to destroy the anti-cancer compounds. It would have prevented their formation if I had blended it before they were cooked, if I cooked them before it was blended. Okay, now I'm going to take the kale or the bok choy or the mustard greens or the broccoli rub. I'm going to put that in the blender, lay a little liquid into that, and blend that up. And that's going to create a little stink, too, and I'm going to pour that in the soup, too. I'm usually, this says kale, right? It says kale or collards or other greens. When I'm making this soup at home, I'm usually not using kale. I prefer to use collard greens or mustard greens or turnip greens or broccoli rub. Why is that? Because my family is always eating so much kale. And I'd rather them get, and the soup takes away the bitterness. And kale is not bitter, so they can use the kale more on other recipes more readily. So I'd rather put a more pungent and, and, and a, a green that even has more of those um, anti-cancer, the isothiocyanides or glucosinolates that cause the bitterness. So maybe use a different green in the soup. And then I'll pour that into the soup. And now I can put the zucchini in at any time because the zucchini doesn't have to be blended. The zucchini I could have put in earlier and I could take it out now that it's cooked and I could blend that into the soup and put it back in. So I didn't blend up the beans in there. I can put my peas in the blender now that have been cooking long enough and I could whip that up and pour that into the soup. I can chop up my mushrooms now because I don't want them blended. I want them lumpy and chunky in the soup. And I can cut up parsnips or little pieces of, you know, but usually I use parsnips because there's carrot juice in the soup already, so I want a little different flavor. Maybe I'll put some parsnips to put in little chunks in the soup. But in any case, I have my mushrooms and I make my spices in there. A little bit of veggie zest or Mrs. And Mrs. Dash, or you can use veggie base, but any one of these um, non-salt flavoring spices. But keep in mind, Mrs. Dash is, doesn't have salt in it, but it's very peppery. I don't want the, food, the soup that peppery, but a little bit of Mrs. Dash suggested a hint of pepper flavor is nice in that soup. To be mixed with our veggie zest makes a great combination for flavor in the soup. And then the secret ingredient is to blend some cashews into the soup to give it a little creaminess. And I may even mix cashews and hemp seeds, right? Because I want to get a little omega-3, omega-6 balance in there. And I whip that into the blender and into the soup base and pour it into the soup and stir it around. And then I let it cook for a while and there I have the soup done. Cook for two hours to get it really soft enough. And then I take that hot pot of soup and I clean out a shelf in my refrigerator so we can eat that soup that night. But once the night's over and it's soup's still warm, I put the whole warm soup into the refrigerator as is, covered it up. So the next morning it's cold, I can put it into plastic. I don't feel comfortable putting the hot soup into plastic containers. I'd rather put the soup cold into plastic containers to put aliquotted out into 10 containers for the whole week. And that's just one soup, and now you have to use your creative, you know, cooking, having fun with cooking to change it around. We're going back to that earlier slide. And you can see how we can change this around. I can put the cabbage in, and I can put, I can make it a lentil soup. I could add prunes to the soup, right? I could put prunes in. I'm going to put prunes in. I want to put something sour in. Maybe I'll put balsamic vinegar in with the prunes, right? Maybe I want to make it sour with apple cider vinegar and put lemon and apple cider vinegar. Maybe I want to put apples and apple cider vinegar in the soup to make it as sweet and sour with the cabbage and the lentils. Maybe I want to make a pea and corn soup with the split peas and maybe more, more split peas and less lentils. And little corn that I'm going to leave in kernels and not going, to, not going to blend it all up. And I want to have that contrast between the cre smoothie, creamy part and the lumpy, chunky part. When we went to Italy at the, at the Nutritarian Hotel in Italy, they used to like cream everything into their soups. So their soups were always smooth and creamy over there. They never left anything lumpy, chunky in there. I like the combination between half creamy and half lumpy. That's why I don't blend the mushrooms. And I leave it, and the shiitake mushrooms are most favorable because they're, they, when you chop them up, they're still like meat, little chewy things in the soup. I like to have that in the soup. And the shiitake mushrooms, you want to eat the stems too. Just cut off that little black bottom where the stem was in the dirt and cut the stem up into little chunks and eat the whole stem, eat the whole mushroom. Don't waste anything. 
And because you're blending the kale in the blender anyway, don't throw the stem away. Or the, eat the whole stem of the, of the mustard green or the kale. Don't waste any food. Save your strawberry tops and put them in your soup. They're good, a good green vegetable. All right, so here's a breakfast soup. You can have a delicious soup for breakfast. Soup is great for breakfast in the wintertime to have a hot soup for breakfast. Here's an apple butternut squash soup. It's made with butternut squash and apples with some kale and onion, a little vinegar and carrot juice, and a little raw cashews, and then cinnamon and nutmeg to give it that little like apple spice kind of flavor. Really a delicious soup, very easy to make. 